All right, please uh, take your seat. We're about to start uh, our next uh, session on uh, privacy and reliability, two uh, very important aspects of IoT as it's considered a little bit more invasive than the rest of the stuff we know and can also be more uh, you know, impactful physically, so better be more reliable. And um, our first speaker today is Nico Lick who's currently uh, doing his master's. Um, but um, what he's gonna talk about is uh, what he's been doing in his bachelor at uh, Frankfurt uh, University of Applied Science, where he was working on um, privacy in IPv6 addressing. And this is exactly what he's gonna talk about. So without further ado, the floor is yours. Thank you for having me. Um, my name is Nico and my topic is IPv6 privacy extensions for the GNRC network stack. IPv6 privacy extensions are used for over a decade in uh, major consumer operating systems, but have uh, never made it to the IoT world yet. And uh, I will cover what privacy exposures this is uh, affiliated with, how privacy extensions address these, and how you can use privacy extensions for rights network jack, for rights network stack GNRC. So privacy extensions, as the name suggests, are extensions and they are extensions for Slack, which is stateless address audio configuration. And that is when a host connects to a network, the router sends a router advertisement with uh, the network prefix, which is the first part of the IPv6 address. And uh, Slack is triggered by the A flag for autonomous address configuration um, that basically uh, is um, when the router tells the host, here's the first half of the IPv6 address, please uh, do some, put some values in the second half to configure your final IPv6 address. So the IPv6 address has a total length of 128 bits. So from the perspective of the host, the subnet prefix uh, is fixed and given by the router. And um, the last part is called the interface identifier. And without privacy extensions, historically, uh, the MAC address of the interface, uh, of the network interface would be used as interface identifier. The MAC address normally used on the link layer, so one layer below the network layer, uh, constitutes a persistent, globally unique identifier, which is uh, totally undesirable properties to expose in the IPv6 address. And uh, privacy extensions uh, address this concern by using random values instead and periodically changing interface identifiers. The four privacy exposures we will cover next are tracking within prefixes, tracking across prefixes, uh, re-identification of uh, the whole network, and geolocation leakage through Wi-Fi access points. Uh, one minor note on how the MAC address is used as the interface identifier is that some MAC addresses are 48 bits uh, long, but the interface identifier is two bytes longer, so um, the standard prescribes to use uh, some fixed bytes and place them in the middle of the MAC address in order to get to 64 bits, and then also do a bit flip. But as you can see, these are totally reversible operations, and um, so if you want, you can even infer the MAC address back from the interface identifier. So tracking within a prefix is uh, pretty simple for now. Uh, it is simply the fact that even after, say, three days, your device and the network will still have the same IPv6 address with, the, with an unchanged interface identifier. And uh, this means uh, as long as, as a set of hosts is connected to a network, you can uh, tell them easily apart because they never change their address, and you can uh, identify, you can distinguish all the hosts in the network uh, by their address having never changed. Um, tracking across prefixes is enabled uh, because of the fact that the interface identifier also remains the same across. Uh, network, so network being a prefix. 
and this makes uh, your device uh, expose this unique identifier where um, no matter at which networks it is connected to. So uh, to have an I IoT example, let's assume a smartwatch that has a Wi-Fi connectivity and uh, maybe even cellular connectivity and your everyday um, commute to, to the office, you connect to your office Wi-Fi on the commute, commute back home, you use the cellular, cellular uh, connection and at home you use your home Wi-Fi. Um, the smartwatch will, if not using privacy extensions, always uh, expose the same interface identifier and a uh, third party observer can see that uh, your smartwatch moved from your home to uh, the cellular network on the go and uh, to a corporate internet service provider network and then uh, back home. So a lot of profiling can be done simply uh, from your uh, IPv6 address alone. Um, and, and the um, network, uh, uh, network uh, categorization uh, can be done from the prefix part, which is given to you by your internet service provider. One uh, special case of tracking across prefixes is when multiple devices change their uh, prefix at once. So, so you have more than one device that changes from the same prefix to the same prefix. And this might, for example, be the case in home networks when your internet service provider employs what's called prefix rotation. Um, the idea of prefix rotation is that your internet service provider for you changes the prefix part of the IPv6 address periodically uh, so that uh, to prevent that the prefix part becomes uh, a stable identifier for you, for your um, connection as a customer of that internet service provider. Now, when uh, your home network uh, prefix changes, um, we uh, have, uh, let's say we have in our home network one IoT device at the top uh, that's exposing its MAC address, so not using privacy extensions, and one privacy-preserving privacy host um, at the bottom um, that both connect to some third-party observer. In this example, I use a uh, hypergiant, so a big uh, central uh, provider that offers internet services like public DNS or NTP servers. And this third party will, um, for the privacy preserving host on prefix rotation, see two different prefixes, first of all, and also two different interface identifiers because, uh, of, use because of the usage of privacy extensions, the interface identifier will, will not remain stable across prefixes. For the host that, it's, that is exposing its MAC address, however, um, Across prefixes, the interface identifier will remain stable, as we've seen. And uh, what this third-party observer can now infer is that uh, this one device that exposed its MAC address moved from prefix one to prefix two. So other devices that moved along uh, with that device from prefix one to prefix two, uh, even though they changed the interface identifier, are very likely the same devices that moved along with uh, with, with, uh, uh, from prefix one to prefix two uh, because they are in, in the same uh, network and the network was uh, changing its prefix. This um, idea stems from the paper One Bad Apple Can Spoil Your IPv6 Privacy. Uh, it found that it's um, in 90% of cases one or two IoT uh, devices uh, per customer uh, of that internet, uh, of a major European internet service provider they analyzed the data from um, that uh, do use MAC addresses and uh, not privacy extensions. Uh, it is IoT devices specifically. 30% uh, of the devices are, so 30% of the devices using MAC addresses are uh, from, from vendors that uh, exclusively produce IoT devices. Another uh, Thirty percent are from at least from manufacturers that uh, produce IoT devices uh, in their portfolio. So those are all very likely IoT devices. And um, overall, uh, seventeen percent of uh, customers of that internet service subscriber, for example, 
uh, that's one in six customers uh, were affected by this. Um, that, that is to say they are trackable by at least one such uh, hypergiant what they analyzed. And uh, as last privacy exposure, uh, we have geolocation leakage through Wi-Fi access points. This is uh, the only privacy exposure that makes actually use of the semantics of the MAC address. Uh, the idea is that um, a device that has multiple interfaces, um, if a device has multiple interfaces, then the MAC addresses of the interfaces might be um, close to each other numerically. Um, so first of all, we start with a third party, a remote entity ob observing the IPv6 address and interface identifier in turn. With um, the host not using privacy extension, the interface identifier will contain the MAC address. And in this example, uh, the MAC address ends in DE. Also, this host has a Wi-Fi access point, and uh, for this Wi-Fi access point, it uses uh, a similar MAC address, uh, namely uh, just uh, with an offset of plus one. So the vendor uh, just used the next MAC address for the uh, next interface of the device. This is uh, fairly common. And uh, one a uh, major player in this uh, leakage are public Wi-Fi databases that are publicly queryable. So you can read them without any uh, particular authentication, so any person can read them. Uh, and these Wi-Fi databases crowdsource uh, Wi-Fi signals uh, basically all around the world. And uh, along with the, for example, uh, MAC address, uh, also send the location where this Wi-Fi signal uh, was observed at. And they all, all these uh, phones, for example, that can contribute data, saw this information in the Wi-Fi database, and the same database can then be queried by the remote entity that observed uh, the um, IPv6 address for potential Wi-Fi MAC candidates, so just probe some offsets that are it's just some nearby MAC addresses. And uh, so overall, you can uh, infer the geographic location from the IPv6 address, something that uh, should not be correlated uh, at all, at least, on, at least not unintentionally. This uh, idea is from the paper IPv6. So now let's have a look at how privacy extensions uh, address uh, these concerns on how they work in particular. This is uh, how a current configuration would look like without using privacy extensions. Therefore, the two checkboxes are unchecked. There are two privacy extensions, namely stable privacy addresses and temporary addresses. Both are standardized in RFCs. And um, as of now, without privacy extensions, you do have a stable address whose, which, of which the interface identifier is um, formed uh, of the MAC address. And stable privacy addresses, addressing keeps this stability property, uh, but does not use uh, the MAC address to generate the interface identifier. Temporary addresses, on the other hand, uh, can be seen as an entirely new type of addresses that are explicitly not stale, but even if you remain attached to a network, they periodically do change the interface identifier. So in a bit more detail, um, also the temporary addresses, of course, immediately change the interface identifier when you change the prefix so as not to cause uh, any risk of correlation at all. Uh, in, in temporary addresses, the interface identifier is uh, generated completely randomly, and uh, temporary addresses have a lifetime of uh, two days fixed time but they are actually only used uh, for a random time of 0 0.4 up to one days for new connections. Um, and the remaining time, this address is still kept for uh, potentially already established connections so as not to uh, abruptly abort any established connections. 
Stable uh, privacy addresses are also recommended as a default over usage of MAC, address, uh, MAC addresses in the interface identifier uh, since 2017 by the IOTF. And um, to keep the stability property that applications might already rely upon on uh, um, because of, of the previous use of um, the MAC address, uh, they use a fixed interface identifier per prefix and uh, to, to not uh, allow any correlation across prefixes, they do use different in interface identifiers across prefix. But whenever you change back to a previously visited prefix, you will always use, uh, you will also use the uh, same interface uh, identifier you ever used, you always used on that prefix. Uh, this property uh, is uh, achieved uh, by using a hash function um, so the interface identifier is uh, determined as the output of the hash function. The most important inputs uh, of which are the network prefix and a secret key. The secret key is uh, at least 128 bits in size is randomly generated for each device and should only be known to the device. Uh, this, these two parameters in uh, combination cause the stability property. So when the prefix changes, the interface identifier will be different. Um, but but being, using the hash function, if whenever the input is the same, the output, that is the resulting interface identifier, will also be the same. So uh, one note on how many temporary addresses you can have. As I said, uh, they have a fixed lifetime of two days but uh, are not actively used for new connections the whole time. So when a temporary address um, gets into this deprecated state where it shouldn't be used for new connections, of course a new, temporary, uh, a new further temporary address gets generated. And uh, these with the default lifetimes recommended in the RFC uh, therefore might overlap with uh, having up to four temporary addresses at once. Whereas with stable privacy addresses, you will uh, only always have one stable privacy address per prefix. And uh, now let's have a look at how you can use privacy extensions in Riot. Uh, this is how it will look like in your Riot uh, terminal or shell. Um, in the second line, we see the hardware address, that is the MAC address. And in the two last lines, we see that uh, in neither of the IPv6 addresses, uh, the hardware, the MAC address is exposed. Uh, the last line shows the temporary addresses, the temporary address uh, as indicated by the temp prefix at the end of the line. And the second to last line is uh, the stable privacy address because it does not use the MAC address. Um, this works fine for Ethernet or Wi-Fi, but um, there's one caveat with uh, six low-pan networks, because uh, six low-pan networks use IP header compression, and uh, this compression uh, also shortens the IPv6 address and transmission. And this compression makes exactly use of the fact that norm until then, the MAC address has always been used as interface identifier. Um, if we now don't use the MAC address, uh, we have but some other random bytes, we uh, cannot omit them anymore, so um, we would have to transmit them. Uh, if that's fine, uh, you can just go ahead, but maybe you want to keep using compression, but also have privacy uh, in your IPv6 addresses. Um, six low pen um, enables the use of uh, compression contexts in the network. Uh, compression contexts uh, allow st now stateful compression um, in the six low pan network. And uh, the hosts, whenever they use their IPv6 addresses, can then refer the, to the context ID. So, for example, to, to this uh, number one uh, to abbreviate, so to compress the addresses and not have to transmit them in, in full, uh, full length every time. Um, this is uh, the first aspect where cooperation from the router comes in, into place um, because only the, uh, a router can create compression contexts 
And uh, from, from the pull requests, from the privacy extensions, there's a, a branch linked to that uh, I called opportunistic compression context, uh, which is simply that when, whenever um, a router gets an address registration from a host and sees that this address uh, can not be statelessly compressed because it does not use the MAC address as interface identifier, the router will create a compression context so that the host can still benefit from, from compression. And the lifetimes of the context are bound to the same lifetimes as the uh, address registration of the host. So the compression context will exist for the same time as the IPv6 address is used. Um, having this, we, we still have this limit on a 16 compression context for a 6 lopen network. Um, so if you want to scale beyond that, because you have so many hosts uh, uh, in your 6 lopen network, there are some uh, ideas that you can do. Uh, however, neither of them is uh, implemented. Um, and one idea in particular I want to highlight that is uh, compression context per device instead of for the whole six low pan network and, and shared across hosts. Um, so each device having, say, the same number of, of 16 compression contexts, but now per device would suffice. Um, but this was actually. Uh, dropped uh, by the IETF uh, because the audience perceived it as uh, having too high operational complexity. Um, I published the privacy extensions and two separate uh, pull requests. They are, by the way, open since uh, February, so any reviews are welcome. And uh, you can enable uh, each privacy extension uh, with, uh, by adding one line to your make file. And I, I recommend uh, enabling uh, stable privacy addresses in general because there, there shouldn't be any expected complications when switching over to this uh, interface identifier type uh, compared to using the MAC address. Um, with temporary addresses, on the other hand, you have to make, have to take into account uh, how you use uh, your IPv6 address for what for what uh, connections? Um, the temporary addresses by nature periodically change, uh, and that could also mean that you're um, constantly uh, kept alive. Long-lived connections you do with these IPv6 addresses um, might be uh, interrupted for a short time. To conclude, uh, privacy extensions prevent uh, your IPv6 addresses to serve as a tracking identifier. They are also relevant for IoT devices, and you can use them in Riot. Thank you for your attention, and these were my primary sources, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions? Okay, um, you mentioned how to compress with six lopen, but did you also look into chic? Into what? Chic, S C H C, uh, static uh, context setup compression. What do you use usually for, for example, for LoRa? Um, no, in short, no. I heard of it, but I uh, didn't look in, uh, didn't look further into it. Um, as far as I remember, GNSC doesn't have a concept of lifetimes for addresses, so how do you do deprecated addresses? Uh, good question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so it's, uh, that was a bit of a peculiarity when reading the RFC, because the RFC assumes that you uh, associate the lifetimes um, that are actually prefix lifetimes uh, directly to the addresses. and. Uh, in GNRC, the lifetimes uh, are attached, uh, however, to the prefix directly. Um, in the end, it's not that uh, big of a difference, actually, and uh, it, uh, the implementations uh, behave the same, um, as, as described in RFC. Um, what I do is I create uh, a, a separate uh, prefix for the temporary uh, for a temporary address itself 
and I put the lifetimes of the temporary address in, in there. So you have uh, once the prefix advertised by the router uh, with, with, the ad, with the lifetimes advertised by the router and uh, a separate prefix with uh, the dedicated lifetimes for the temporary address. Um, so I have um, three, three items here, but I think they're short. Uh, one is, um, can we just make stable privacy addresses default? I think that would be a good choice for Riot. Uh, a default? Yeah. Uh, I think that would be a good idea, but uh, keep in mind uh, the limitation of 16, 6 low pan compression context. Yeah. But for other um, uh, things, yes. Six, uh, six low pan compression is actually the, the, the other point. Um, if all the countermeasures toward, uh, for, uh, added, for the um, added address length require the rootless cooperation anyway, um, shouldn't such setups just use 16-bit hardware address, 16-bit MAC addresses assigned by the router? My impression from what you've told is that such, um, such addresses would have the same properties as RFC 7217 addresses, because for within one prefix, the router assigns one link layer address that stays the same. And all we might need is that the router, when renumbering, would reissue of the link layer addresses so that they are not tracked. But it's 16 bit, and you can't track a lot of 16 bits. So, um, but that should address a lot of the issues and would automatically remove the need for any updated compression because it's reusing the link layer address again. Um, so far, I think, yeah, that's uh, feasible, yes. And, and the third item is, like, are those times tunable? Because if we, like, change the time to, say, renew every two days and retain for 1.5 days, we're down to two addresses, and that's also easier. Sorry, uh, can you repeat the question again? Are the, are the time parameters tunable? Because, yes. okay, um, then, so, the so we foresees. could just choose them to only have two addresses at any time. Yes, it's a compile time. Uh, very well, yes. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, thanks for doing this work. I've always been wondering why this approach, this compression approach has been chosen uh, and, and there would have been other choices, design choices that could have been made to make the whole thing more privacy friendly. And so, so it's really great. And maybe one should think about uh, revisiting some of those compression mechanisms and address assignments to in an IoT context because they don't seem to be state of the art anymore. I don't know if you explored that direction. Like uh, uh, again, what? In, in like you presented a few solutions uh, and specific. So we have seen since the since some of these RFCs have been published. There were changes to the privacy attitude also for IoT devices. So, mm -hmm. for example, you mentioned these uh, the randomizing the MAC address assignment. Mm -hmm. That has been more popular now with all the, because of all the tracking that has happened. And so I wonder whether it would be good to look at the, these documents again and the compression techniques and then sort of rework a revised version of them. Yes, uh, I think so. Yeah. Thanks again. Uh, any last question? One, two, three. Sold. Um, let's thank our speaker again. Thanks.